It's no longer you that lives, but it's Christ that lives within you, as Paul said to himself. He says, it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ yeah. that lives within me in the life I now live in the flesh. I live in the faith in the Son of God. I trust Him with my life. Your life is not your own. You were purchased with the price of the blood of Jesus. Now you can treat the blood of Jesus as some vain mere thing. But you will not reap the benefits or the fruit of the life, the life of Christ. There's a way that seems right to man, but its way only leads to destruction. You see, what Father God wants to do is He wants to teach you His ways. He wants to teach you His, His life. He wants to teach you his righteousness, the yeah. right way of doing this, yeah. being yeah. and doing. You're yes. no longer a part of the kingdom of this earth. You're part of the kingdom of heaven. That is the kingdom that you belong to. That is the kingdom in which you live and walk in now. God Almighty is your God. Jesus is the head of the church. And we receive our instruction from him. You can see it written in the word of God. The way that we are to live and walk. You can see his life. He manifested his life before all men. He manifested his life before all men. You see, he manifested the life of God. And in turn, we're to manifest the life of Christ. He says, I don't do anything unless I, I see my father do it. I don't say anything unless I hear my father say it. Yeah. So what does that say of us? He gave us the Holy Spirit so that we can say the things that God is saying. And so that we can see the things the Father is doing so that we can begin to do it. And that we don't do our own things. We don't live this life to please our flesh, to please ourselves. But we live this life so that we may live through Christ Jesus. That's why Jesus says, deny yourself. Deny your flesh. Paul says, I die daily. He had to die daily. There was a, a daily death that, that he faced. In prison and beaten. All for the sake of the gospel shipwrecked several times, not just once. And he went through grave circumstances and situations. He says, I buffet my body daily. Doesn't mean that he went to the buffet line. But he buffeted. In other words, he put it away. He put those desires of the body down and he chose to follow Christ Jesus. Listen, this... This is a strong man's gospel, and it's not for the faint of heart, it's not for the weak, and it's not for those who want to please themselves. Yeah. It's good. It's good. But it requires us to fully submit our hearts to the Lord Jesus. It requires us to fully submit our lives to the Holy Spirit. But listen, it's not that He left you on your own to just try to figure this all out by yourself. He gave you the Holy Ghost so that you would have a desire to do of His will. His good will. For God is at work within you. Yes. With the energy. What is the energy? The Holy Spirit and power. Yes. And work within you to give you the will and the desire to do with His good pleasure. But if you submit not to the Spirit of God. If you do not submit to the life of God. And continue to give yourself over to the things of the flesh. You will not partake of the things of God. It's yeah. plain and simple. Right. Yeah. Right. You can't. Yeah. And it's not that God is being mean. He's not. Yeah, He's given us everything that pertains to life in godliness. So that we can live this life in righteousness. You are born again. I love what Pastor Mark says. You're not half born. You're born again. You were born righteous with the moment that you accepted Him as your Lord and Savior. You grabbed the hold of this for faith. You received a nature change. Your heart changed. But if you continue in sin, then maybe you need to revisit this. And say, God, what's the deal here? Amen? If your heart desires the things of God, and to do what is right. 
and you find yourself struggling with temptation, understand that temptation is an outward force. It's, it's the demonic forces fighting against you, fighting against the kingdom of God. Yes. Listen, yes. Because Jesus said the kingdom is amongst you. Well, now it's in us as blood-bought children of God. Why? Because Jesus is in us. Because Father God set up residence on the inside of us. He said, I'll be in you and I'll walk amongst you. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So you're not stuck alone. God is with you. Who created the heavens and the earth. So that you can be strong in Him. But you can't partake of this, what's in the world, and try to partake of this, which is of God. Because then you're going to be torn and betwixt in between and then you're basically still living in that place of a waging war on the inside of you. You're being pulled like a tug of war between light and darkness. And then you have this idea of a dual nature. Like you have this evil on the inside. On. You have no evil on the inside That's of you. Right. You're a blood child of God. Amen. You don't. That's right. Your soul was saved. And sanctified the moment that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Hello? Yeah. Salvation of your soul. Look up salvation. What does that mean? Sozo. What does sozo mean? Saved. Healed. Delivered. Fully delivered. Your soul is completely delivered. So you don't have to sit here and keep trying to sanctify your soul. You're sanctified. You are set apart. The moment that you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, and he's given you the ability now by his spirit to live and walk in this life and rule and reign in this life. Amen? And thank God of his mercy because he allows us to keep getting it right every day. His mercies are new every morning so we can get it right. If we stumble, though the righteous may fall, certain times they shall rise again. But understand this, that you're saved. It's not like it's not like you just, well, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you're saved. It's not this half in, half out kind of situation. Yeah. No longer does Satan have you. You don't have the nature of the devil no more. Right. You have the nature of God. You receive the nature change the moment Jesus Christ came to live on the inside of you. Yeah. Nature change. The Holy Ghost regenerated your spirit man yes. and made it alive and cleaned up your soul. Now the only thing that you're dealing with now is the battle of the, of the mind, the battlefield of the mind. Where the enemy comes in and tries to, 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 to just wreak havoc. And, and, and it's an outward force. Understand this because he saved your whole man. Yes. It was quickly done. So now what it is, is, is now you have to put the deeds of the flesh. So when the thoughts come, that's what you're putting to death. You put to death those thoughts. You cast down every vain imagination. That is what this is. That's what it means to be put to death, the deeds of the flesh. It's the thoughts that come. It's the temptations that come. That is what you're supposed to put to death. The kingdom of heaven is set through violence, but it's the vine that take it by force. So you violently hate wickedness and sin. You violently hate those things, and you grab a hold of the kingdom. You're like, no, the kingdom is mine, and it takes a violent man to take a hold of the kingdom. And you're like, I don't get this. What do you mean? I, don't, I, thought, it wasn't about, I thought God wasn't about violence. you got to understand this by the Spirit, my friends. In other words, you're so violent against sin and wickedness and disease. Not in men. Not what's in happening in a man. Yes, in men, but, but you're not attacking men. You're not going after mankind. You, it's, it's, it's the forces of wickedness and all those things that want to come at you and to try to wreck your faith and bring you right back to the place that you were. Come on. A deprived individual, deprived of the things of God. Debased. He wants to wreck you. He wants to make you. He wants to fill you up. With seven more demons. He wants to make it seven times worse. You got set free. Your house was set clean. And all of a sudden, seven more demons are seeking rest. So the same one that was cast out goes and gets seven more and comes back. And, and, and then and the, your condition was worse than once it began. That's why you got to get the Holy Ghost. That's why you need to be full of the Holy Spirit. 
That's why you need to be praying in the Holy Ghost. So that you can continue to remain in Him, walk in Him, fellowship with Him. When you speak in an unknown tongue, you edify yourself. What does it mean that you edify yourself? It means that you built yourself up. Why you built yourself up? You built yourself up so you can stand the good and fight the good fight of faith. When all you've done is stand, you stand therefore so that you can resist the enemy. Why? Because you've submitted to God. Yeah. You've submitted your heart and your life completely over to the Lord instead of getting it over to everything else that's under the sun and the earth. Well, God understands. He understands that I'm just frail and weak. No, He didn't make you frail and weak. He made you strong in Christ Jesus. You're strengthened. Even the body was strengthened. The whole salvation, the whole man. Come on, this is the truth of God's Amen. word. And it's the truth that makes you free. Amen. Amen. We don't have to struggle. Amen. We don't have to sit here in this, this thing back and forth. Oh. Yeah. It's just a decision that you That's make right. to totally follow God no matter what. And that you're going to put to death those things that come across your, your, your path. That the enemy's going to come. He's going to come. Be not deceived of his devices. Come on now. Come on. Now I'm not looking here to glorify the enemy at all. He's a defeated foe. Right? Yeah. He just acts like he doesn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> but when you exercise your authority and you know your authority, he has to bow. That's yeah. right. But if you've partaken of the things of his nature, you have no strength to stand against the things of the enemy. You have no strength. You pulled yourself straight out of the defenses. So when you're tempted by all the things that are under the sun, you're not going to have the strength to stand because you haven't submitted yourself to God. And all those are strong words, submission. People have a hard time with that sometimes. Why? I'm my own person. I can do what I want. I make my own choices. I'm all bad. <clears throat> Say that to your creator. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He formed you. Come on now. You're clay in the master's hand. How does the pot say to the potter? How does the clay say to the potter? You, did, you, you formed me wrong. Yeah. No, he formed you to fellowship with him. He made you to be righteous. He made you to be holy. Yes. That's how you were designed. You were created. You were created to have communion and union with Heavenly Father. Yes, sir. And in order to have communion and union with Heavenly Father, you have to have His nature. There's no other way around it. You can't have a different nature in communion with Heavenly Father. It just doesn't work. Amen. That's right. What fellowship? There you go. What fellowship does light and darkness have? There is no fellowship. There is no fellowship. The church needs to rise up and quit dabbling in the things of the world. We quit trying to be relevant to the world. Come on. We try, keep trying to be relevant to the world. Why? So that we might win the world? See, because they, they misinterpret Paul the whole time. He says, I be all, be all things into all people yeah. so that I might win them. He wasn't saying that you act like the world That's in order so that you might win them. So There's a difference. Jesus did not act like the world so that he might win them. Matter of fact, he came in and he changed everything. Yeah, right. People recognized it because he came in with power, he came in with authority. Yeah. Demons would start screaming out. Right. Yeah. What do you have to do with us, Jesus? I know who you are. Shut up! Come out! Amen. Amen. 
So he, did, he cast out unclean spirits. He laid down what was sin, and what and, and, and he laid down the kingdom of how we were supposed to live in the king, his kingdom. Come on now. Yes. Don't be deceived by this present world. Don't be deceived by the rulers of the air. Yeah. Don't be deceived by the principalities and yeah. powers. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Don't be deceived by those things yes. because they're out uh -huh. mucking around in the, in, in the lives of men and, and, and causing them to become even more depraved. Before they know it, they no longer act like men, but they're acting like animals. Because they've denied God, they've resisted God. They left the darkness rather than the light. And because of it, they're eating the fruit of it. And the fruit of eating of darkness and their sin is death. Yeah. It's death. It's separation between God and man. Yeah. It's not God's desire. He told us. He warned us. He says, choose life. I tell you today, choose life. Choose life. I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing, but I tell you, choose life. Yes. Yeah. What he's saying that there's there's two natures because of the fall of, of Satan and everything that took place, and, and he's running a monk and he's caused man to fall, and therefore he's like, hey, there's life and death set before you. I'm telling you, you, you gotta choose, you gotta make a choice. But he still said, I tell you, choose life. Now, it didn't mean that God went and took death and said, here you go. That wasn't what he did. Amen. Now, I'm not going to get into the origin of sin and get into all of that other stuff. But what he says is, okay, look before you. There's death. There's life. What do you want? What do you want? Because that's the only that's the one thing that he gave us. He gave us free will. He gave us choice. Yeah. He gave us choice. And even as a blood-bought child of God, we have choice every day. Are we going to partake of what's in the earth? I feel God just cutting away the things more and more in my life and, and opening my eyes to see that this and the things that, that, that once used to be okay, they're not okay anymore. Because you're living in the kingdom of the earth. Yes, we are in the world, but we're not. We're not of it. So what does that say? That means the world needs to see something different about us. As of now, when the world looks in, they don't see much change. There's a few that are really radical and, and, and whatnot, and we're not even, we're not even close yet. We're, we're, we're getting there. But we're not, we're not at where I know God wants us to be. Right. Where he's calling us up to this place of holiness, this walk of holiness. Amen. Amen. And fellowship and communion with him. You understand, when you walk in that holiness, that means you're going to have an intimate relationship with heaven. That's right. Creating the heavens and the earth. Amen. I mean, I'll just give you a little tidbit. I love what Pastor Mark, and I'm not going to preach what he preached on. But I'm just kind of giving you an overview of what we received this last week on holiness and the glory of God. And it was by, with, and it was really showing the life of Moses, and you can see it by, by progression. First, he cried out of the fiery bush, the bush that was on fire but was not consumed. Just a small bush. He cried out and said, Dear Moses, don't come any closer. So he said, Dear Moses, don't come any closer. For the, the ground that you stand on is holy ground. To remove your sandals. And then the next step was Mount Sinai when the, when the glory cloud came over Mount Sinai. And it was a great, uh, a great cloud of darkness and shaking and trembling and all the different things. And the people trembled. They, they were weak in their knees because of the great authority of God, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. And they couldn't handle it because the sin that was on the inside of them. They couldn't handle it. God wanted to speak to them. 
But they were freaked out. They didn't want to let go of some stuff. Yeah. Moses even said, come on, don't be afraid of yeah. him. Yeah. He wants to bring you close yeah. that he might test yeah. you and prove yeah. you so, so that you will not right. sin against him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he called up Moses to the cloud of the mountain. So he went from holy ground to a whole mountain right. <laughs> made holy. Yeah. And he was called into it. Come on. And then the next step was in the tabernacle where he met face to face with God. Yeah. See, the first time, he, he, he just went back to see his backside. It doesn't not say he met face to face with him. Tabernacle. Talked as a friend, talked to a friend. But it was all in progression because as he walked this road of obedience, he walked this obedience, and because it was obedience to the Lord, he got to get closer and closer yes. and closer to God. Yes. Come on, man. This should get you excited. I want to be obedient because I want to be face to face with God. Now, he sets you right. He put a spirit in you. You were born again with his very nature. And this is what's available to you. But it's all based upon you. Are you going to go after you? Are going to grab a hold yes. of this life that he's given yes. you? And give up and, and just be full on obedient yeah. and walk in this way. Because you, there's no other really way to walk. Because you can, you can walk in disobedience. And you'll find yourself being just like the children of Israel. Back and forth, back and forth. They kept forgetting the Lord their God. Yeah. They kept forgetting Him. Over and over and over. Because yeah. they, and so they had sinned. They would go walk in this sin. Yeah. They go partake of what He told them not to partake of. But yet He kept, because of His mercy, He kept calling them again. He says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. Yeah. Let's not be the ones that he has to keep calling us back again, calling us back again, calling us back again, calling us back again, calling us back again. I gotta repent again. I gotta repent. I gotta repent. I gotta go up and repent again. Yes, we want to live in that place where we're repentant. I understand that. Because as you get closer to the glory, the things that, that, that you that you realize that it's not it's not the sin nature that's on the inside of you. It's just the things that you haven't seen before. And you got to say, oh, I don't want that attitude. That attitude's not right. I mean, down to attitudes. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't try to get this by your head because you'll miss everything. You got to grab this in your heart. And what it is is by faith you keep thanking Him that you've been made holy, that you've been made righteous, and you keep with him on a daily basis and you keep fellowshipping with him. You fellowship with him in the word of God. You fellowship with him in the word so that you may meet with him face to face. It's way is open. Listen, he's given us a new and living way. The way is open. Why do you hesitate? Why? Why hesitate coming to Father God? Amen. Amen. I'm busy. Listen. He's the one that gave you the power to be able to work with your hands. Amen. The ability to think, and to process, and do all that so that you can provide for your family. Listen, God's with you. He'll be in fellowship with Him while you work. Yeah. You still want that alone time with him, but fellowship with him while you work. Yes. Get in the word on a daily basis so that you may grow thereby. See, when faith comes in contact, faith in your heart comes in contact with the truth of God's word, then freedom comes to you. And what does that freedom do? That freedom, it causes cleanliness. You just clean. You feel clean before God. And when you're clean before God, you want to fellowship with Him. Yeah. When you're not clean yeah. before God, yeah. then you're not going to come to Him right. on a regular right. basis. Right. You're not. Yeah. You've touched that which is unclean. Yeah. 
He promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you. He's going to continue with his loving mercy. Thank God. Yeah, right. to, to call us back yeah, right, into right. that place That's of right. fellowship and relationship That's with right. him. But my gosh, we don't have to sin. That is such a huge if. It's if you sin. Yeah. If you sin. Yeah. If you sin. Yes, sir. But you've yes. been made righteous. You've been made whole. Yes. Come on, this is going to break down all of these lies of the enemy that says, oh, you're just a, that whole idea of just a sinner saved by verse. Oh, I do sin. I sin every day. I gotta quit it. Quit saying that. Yes. Yes. So I thank you, Father God. I don't have to sin every day. I don't want to sin every day. I don't want to even give myself over to that thing. I don't want to give myself over to the way that seems right to man. But I give myself to your ways and your thoughts and your heart. And just start speaking unto him and fellowshipping and thanking him. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you, Father, that I'm clean before you because of Jesus and what you've done. And I know that old temptator, he comes along and he goes, oh, I remember what you did. I repented. I haven't returned to that. He doesn't even remember that. And neither do I. Shut up. I'm not even paying no attention to that stuff. Because in the moment you start grabbing a hold of that and feeling that, that guiltiness of that and the con of that and start taking that in, then he, he then then what it is is that he's got power over you. He starts trying to exercise his power over you. Come on now, don't give it. Don't give into the way that seems right to man. Don't give into those things. You have no right to that. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You have a right to the things of God. You have a right to the ways of God. You have a right to know His thoughts and His heart. And He wants to reveal it to you by His Spirit. So you can't walk in the flesh and 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 have the Spirit too. So one or the other. Amen. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8. I just feel like I need to hit that. It's not in my notes. That's not what I want direction I was going, but I just really feel I want to touch on these before I get a little bit further. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free from, uh, set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do, the sinful flesh, not the, the body. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, the sinful flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the sinful flesh set their minds on the things of the sinful flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the sinful flesh is death. So if you wake up in the morning with your mind set to do evil, if your mind to yield over to sinful flesh, then that means obviously you're not born of the Spirit. Am I right? Yeah. It's that simple. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you need to understand this. When you're having temptation, that's a different, whole different story. In other words, your heart is not set out to go sin. You don't want to sin. You don't want to give into those things. But then all of a sudden you feel these temptations. You feel those things that come on you that once once messed with you in times past. You were tempted with these things in times past. So those same temptations come. That doesn't mean that, oh my gosh, I'm not saved because I have these. And this is where people in the body of Christ get caught up in a big old mess there because then they think, oh, what's up? 
Why is this not working? And so therefore you wind up having the, uh, the, the message of like, well, the soul still needs to be cleansed and, and made right. No, maybe he did that work. Or, or the dual nature, you know, that you have these a, a good and evil on the inside of you now. No, that's not, that's not right. That's, that's, that, that's the depraved man. In, in, in Romans 7, that's the one who's caught big, uh, twixt in between where there's the war on the inside because their heart and desire is right, but they couldn't do it, do it because they didn't have the power to do it. Right. Yeah. That means they just wanted the light. They wanted God, but they didn't know how to do it. They didn't know how to do this. They didn't know how to receive it. Well, we receive it through the acceptance of Jesus Christ. And then the life of Christ comes on the inside of us. And then there, there, therefore there's no, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because we no longer are, are of the sinful flesh. We've been delivered. He destroyed that. He redeemed us from that. Completely redeemed us. So therefore now your heart all of a sudden desires what is right. And you're not setting out. And then this temptation comes. Then what you got to do is you put that to death. You put that temptation to death. It doesn't mean that it's in you. Do you understand? Now when you start partaking of it and grabbing a hold of it and doing it, you fall into that place again. And like the way you were before, you turned like a dog returned back to its own vomit again. Then you need to come and you need to repent and you need to cry out to God, God, forgive me, fill me, I fled me, I'm wrong. I, you need to return to your first love and you need to get things straight. Because you looked at the Corinthian church and, 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 and God was uh, very strong against the church of Corinthian. He was very strong against the, uh, the Laodicean church. He was very strong against many of them that, that started partaking of, of some really gross sins. Yeah, right. But even in his own mercy, he told them, on. you better make a change or I'm going to remove your candlestick. Yeah. In other words, I'm going to remove that pastor from that place. Because yeah. that's what the candlestick was. So in other words, the responsibility was upon the pastor to bring the correction. And that letter was to all the pastors. Of that whole area, of all those seven, those uh, seven churches, seven churches. It was in a circle, and then you have Ephesus, pretty much right here. It was the main main city of all of them, of uh, Asia Minor. Amen. And so he was putting the responsibility in the in the pastors and the leaders' hands that they had to bring this correction for, and tell the people you can't. Keep yes. messing with these things that you've turned away from. You can't turn back to idols. You can't have both. Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't succumb to both. And it's very much today. We can still see it in operation in the church today. Yeah. That we have we have our idols. The church has its idols. It's not in the same in America. It's not like idols like a, 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 a statue like it was then. It's a little different. We're dealing with a whole different thing now. A whole different ball game. We've given our, ourselves over to idols of sports. We've given ourselves over to other idols yeah. that are, are there. And, 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 and we've got to cut away from those things. Yes, sir. And, and I'm not saying everybody, well, you can't go watch a football game now, and you can't do this. Listen, it's got to be a revelation that starts coming yeah. into you. Well, you can't watch television. No, it's got to become a revelation yeah. that comes to you. Yeah. You've got to understand. So what God will do is he'll begin to cut those right. things away yeah. more. He draws you into yeah. him yeah. as you draw into that holiness. Yeah. And you start yeah. seeing one by one, idols start falling in your life. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. The idols start crashing. The idols yeah. start falling. Yeah. 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 He doesn't want you bound by anything. He doesn't want to give you yeah. have you giving lordship to anything else. He's the only one that is to have lordship. That's you belong to him. You were purchased with a price. You belong to the Lord. Right. You are made holy now. That's Amen. Right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Free. Yeah. And the only reason why some won't come to the Lord and really fellowship with them because they feel unclean. They know that they partake of things. Deep down on the inside, they know that they partake and took of some things they shouldn't have had. Just a glance. Just a little bit. But every time you're violating your conscience, and every time you violate your new conscience, it's just like a chunk in the relationship. It's like, ouch, that you have with that. Yes. Yeah. 
you still keep moving. You act again until you get it right, until you start rising up out of this thing and, and start living in holiness and righteousness on a continual basis. You're not you're not back and forth, blah, blah, flip, blah. Just grow up and mature in the things of God yes. and remain in holiness. And the good news is, is that you can, you can, you can, you can. He's given us the ability by His Spirit. set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It's hostile to God's ways. It wants to rebel instead of accept, instead of receive the correction, instead of, listen, we Listen, if we want to rebel against God's ways, then we're a bastard. I know that's strong words, but we're bastards. If you don't want to live according to God's ways, then you're a bastard. But if you want God's ways, then you're going to receive the correction and the teaching that He gives you. You're going to receive the instruction of His word. Amen. Amen. And this is in love. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is in love. It's a warning against those things that you don't give yourself over to that. That's right. Why? Because I want you in heaven. I want you in relationship with Heavenly Father. You can't think that God just turns a blind eye to the things that you do in secret. He doesn't. He sees everything. He's with you when you lie down. He's with you in the shower. He's with you in the bathroom. He's with you in the office. He's with you wherever you go. He's with you. So don't think that, oh, we're getting away with stuff. You ain't getting away with nothing. I pray the conviction of the Holy Ghost comes all over every single thing that has happened. Wherever we're at, in any place, in any fashion, form, wherever, whatever it is, I pray for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. That all of a sudden that you're yes, thinking about Lord. going ahead and giving into some kind of temptation. All of a sudden, just this image of God right there and eyes on you. Don't you give some? No. I'm, I'm watching. I love you too much. I love you too much for you to give yourself over to that. Throw up. Like a dog returns back to its own vomit. Because that's what's happening when we do this. We're actually going back to vomit. Your own vomit. That doesn't sound very appetizing anymore now, does it? That sin doesn't sound very appetizing anymore, does it? trying to produce some kind of punishment for the things that they, because they were punished, they weren't loved. They weren't loved. Yeah. If you spare the rod, you hate your child with all these things. Yeah. 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 
big. It's strong. In other words, the correction is that correction that needs to be brought. Our Heavenly Father loves us so much that He wants to teach us and practice. He wants to be a father to us. This is such a good day. I know He goes, oh, what the joy! This right here is what yields peace and fruit of righteousness. Yeah. And then you will have your joy. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. that I was wrong and I did something wrong and my parents corrected me and I went through that whole thing. There was weeping and wailing and gnashing of tears <laughs> as the Board of Education was applied to the seat of learning. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but I remember the cleanliness I felt afterwards yeah. and the acceptance and after because my parents hugged me and held me afterwards and told me they, told me they loved me yeah. and the reason, you know, they, they're yeah. cor I'm correcting you because I love you. I hold all my boys. I hold them after I correct them. I tell them I love them. They might hug them. But I just pull them in and away and say, I love you. I love you. Because I'm training you to do what is right so that you don't make dumb choices. And then as they get older, then there's that heart training. you got to sit down. you got to talk to them. you got to show them the word of God. These are the things. That, listen, you got to be aware. There's an enemy. He wants to destroy your life. Kids, your kids need to know that there's a devil in hell. That's right. And he hates you, yeah. and he wants to destroy you. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. And then what you see happening in all the world, and all the craziness, and all the division, and all the divisiveness, it's straight from the pit yes, of hell. And that's where it is. And man yeah. is held sway under. They're yeah. just slaves to it. They don't yes. know any better. Yes. That's why we have to forgive and love people yes. and yes. preach the truth yeah. of yes. Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. That's what has to happen. That's what's going to bring change. Yes. Amen. 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 So there's the life of the Spirit that we're to live. And as you begin to live in the life of the Spirit, then you have authority over the enemy. You'll have authority. Amen. You'll start walking in the realms like Jesus walked. You want to walk in the miracles. You want to walk in the signs and the wonders? Then so did the Spirit, live by the Spirit. That's right. There's great benefits for denying yourself. Because oh. then you're going to get something a whole lot better than what you wanted in the first place. Amen. You're going to see men set free and delivered that were held in slavery to hatred. They were held in slavery to diseases. They were held in, in slavery bound by devils. And you come and you come with the life of Christ and help set men free. You're manifesting the life wherever you go. Souls started being swept into the kingdom and guess what? Then they get rose up to do the same thing and live the same way. And you're just adding to that the family of God, the kingdom of heaven. You start living for something more than yourself. You start having a greater purpose. And the purpose is the kingdom of God. Amen. The purpose is the Lord Jesus Christ. The purpose is, is fellowshipping with God Almighty and having a deep and intimate relationship with Him. You won't care about the things of the world. You just won't. You'll be in it, but you won't be of it. But you'll be manifesting the life wherever you go, just like Jesus did. And guess what? People are going to hate you because, because they love the darkness rather than the light. Their teeth will gnash against you. And they will not be able to touch you until it's your time. And even then, they're, all they did was just kill the body. Your soul, spirit goes right to heaven. goes right with God. You just change from one dimension to another, really. The dimension of the earth to the dimension of heaven. Come on. You just step right over. You just step right over. All you did is you just put off this clothing here. Called the body. That's it. The body without the spirit is dead. That's right. Hey, 
Amen. Yeah. Your spirit's got to go somewhere. Yeah. But amen. If you're already fellowshipping with Heavenly Father, you could be right with Heavenly Father. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Boom. Wow. Just like that. In a moment. That's why the, the, the apostles. <laughs> Disciples, they all, <laughs> they, they was considered a great honor to die for their faith. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They didn't come out with swords and clubs. They didn't come out to, to fighting in that way. They, they were fighting a different kind of fight. Yeah. They were fighting a completely different kind of fight. Mm -hmm. And what I want to pull you all out of is I want to pull you out of the realm of this natural realm fight. And start pulling you into the spiritual realm. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's why it's so important that we live according to the spirit. <laughs> Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. walk in the flesh, so the body. So you got to understand, there's different types of flesh, so when they're translating, you just keep seeing flesh, 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 you got to be able to decipher according to the context what flesh he's talking about. He's talking about the flesh of sin, or is he talking about the sin nature, he's talking about the flesh of the body, the flesh of other types, okay? So we are not waging war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are, are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. We're not fighting other people. Yeah. Yeah. For the weapons of warfare are not of the flesh, but of divine power and stronghold, strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And take every thought captive to obey Christ. So we take every thought captive that comes, we put it to death, and make our thoughts obedient to Christ Jesus, Amen. His way of doing things. Yes, Being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So in other words, as your obedience to the Word of God is complete, then you're able to punish those that, that disobedience, but it's going to come out of a whole other realm. It's going to come out of that realm of love. It's going to come out of a deep realm and care for others so that their souls aren't lost to, uh, 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 to hell and, and damned for eternity. There's a deep love that you're going to have for others. But your obedience has got to be in, in check. Amen? Because then what it is, you start becoming the one who's trying to pluck the, 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 the sliver out of your brother's eye, and yet you've got a beam in your own eye. Now, he never said that you couldn't Make a judgment. He was dealing with hypocrisy with that passage of scripture in Matthew. It was more hypocrisy that he was dealing with. He wasn't dealing about being a judge, judging. Because we are called to judge. We're called, we're righteous. We raise a righteous standard. Amen. Am I right? It's the word of God. Now, the world, we're not out there judging because. And where judgment comes to the world is that we just walk in righteousness and holiness and they're convicted by just our very lives. But there is judgment amongst the brothers and the sisters. Now, we have to be really careful here. You've got to be in walking in obedience. We're not walking around, and we're not walking around looking to judge everybody either. That's, right. That's not what it is. It's, it's just we live the life of the Spirit. And what happens is we just say things by the Holy Ghost. In a deep love and with tact. There's a way that we can do it. And sometimes it can't be tact. Sometimes somebody just so hard headed and just got us to do. Right? Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Why? Because we we gotta hold each other accountable. We all gotta make it. I wanna make it. Y'all want to make it? Yeah. Now we've made it in relationship with Christ and fellowship with our Heavenly Father, but we can't 
sit here and play games with him either. Come on. That's right. I'm not here to play church. Oh, come on now. I love having the Holy Ghost and the joy and the anointing and prophecy to come forth, but the word still needs to come. You still need to hear the truth. And you apply your heart of faith to the word and the truth that you're receiving this morning, you're going to be free. So your obedience has to be complete. We should seek in our hearts to completely obey God. And we talked about this walking in complete obedience. As Moses was walking in that obedience, God, he, he was giving him more and more authority with the children of Israel. He, was, he started decreeing and declaring to the people. He was the judge of them. He had to be their judge. And then where he did is he went and got, spoke with God. Yeah. Talked with God. God would instruct him. This is what I want you to do. Okay. And then he would carry on. Do it. Obedience. Obedience. Let's be obedient to the word of God. Amen. Your obedience starts with just fellowshipping with God's word and being obedient to him. To walk out his word, what it says. And to, and to deny sin. Deny those things that, that would so easily beset you. Continue to run with endurance the race that is set before you. Looking into Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen? Yes. Looking to Him. Hallelujah. Running hard. Not letting those sins so easily beset you. Not letting the cares of this world so easily beset you. But that you stay strong in Christ Jesus. Amen. You'll see that in Hebrews chapter 12. Turn with me over to Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Finally be strong in the Lord in the strength of His might. Not your might. His might. Thank God. <laughs> but on the whole, put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil and heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, to done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To the end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also to me, that words may be given to me in the opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Yes. For which I'm ambassador. Of course, he was in chains. He's given us all the armor to resist the enemy. He's given it all to us. That's good. So I'm a pastor. Come on, you have authority. You're fully clothed in the battle armor. Why did he give this all to us? Because we're in a battle. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying all this so that you start looking for a devil under him and drop. Because <laughs> the stupid is the stupid does. <laughs> you can try. Listen, if you, if you get in a car wreck, and I'm not saying that there can't be a setup or, or, or something like that where it's just like, it seems like people are pulling out in front of you all day long, and then you've got to take authority over that. But, but if you get in a car wreck, that's your fault for not paying attention.
attention. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or somebody else came in and, and, and wasn't paying attention. We're not going to get it. It's an opportunity for us to fully just, right? Yeah. In all things, we're just going to worship God. We're going to praise God. We're going to praise God in the car. We're going to praise God in whatever situation, circumstance that we face. Okay? So we don't blame everything on the devil. Now, I know there's protection, and I know there's not that, and we can you know, pull, pull on that. But what I'm saying is we got to still have a right balance here. Amen. circumstances or situations, it's really the enemy fighting against the kingdom of God. It's not that he's purposely trying to pick on you, per se. Right? Yeah. It's against the kingdom. Yes. If he sees you operating in the kingdom, he sees that start happening, then, then the enemy tries to raise up against you and do different things. It's not a personal thing. It's he's just against the kingdom of God. He hates God. Yeah. And he hates all his children. And so he's going against, against them. And don't go, oh, God, why me? Don't make it about you. Yeah. Understand that you're living in the kingdom now. You're walking in the kingdom. That's just now an opportunity to rise up in a victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen? Because yeah. yeah. the enemy is not going to just give me a free run, or run up the side of the hill. You're in a battle. You're waging a war. It's, 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 it's the kingdom of, of heaven against the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. And you're now translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of the, of the son of his yeah. love. You're translated into the kingdom of heaven now. And that's the kingdom that you're walking and living in now. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So rise up, man and woman of God. Yeah. Rise up yes. and stand against the wiles of the devil and not allow him to, to jerk you around. Live as the mighty man of God and mighty woman of God that you are. Live holy, live righteous. Amen. And then set captives free. Because you're now free. Know that you're free. So you're called to set the captives free. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Luke chapter 4, verse 13. And we're going to get to the good stuff. It was all good. Because, Lord, I want you to know your authority. I want you living in your authority. In the kingdom of heaven. In that realm. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. And a report about him went out through all the surrounding country. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. Now, in, in the King James Version, it says, And a sound went out about him everywhere. 
And that whole word sound was like wave, like in waves, like in the ocean. The sound of him went out everywhere. Of every the miracles that he did, the miracle and, and, and the power that he walked in. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. And he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. The recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who were oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendee and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And they began to say to them. And he began to say to them, today. This scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? So, and they just started doubting. They started to doubt. Yeah. And then they started getting married. He says, yeah. today this is fulfilled in your ears. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed him. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed us. Because the Holy God, because Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist says, There is one who's coming after me whose sandals I'm not fit to carry. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and power. He shall anoint you, baptize you, dunk you in the Spirit and fire. Completely submerged. Your entire being set ablaze by the Spirit of the living God. You've got fire power. Walking your authority. You've been marked by God with the precious Holy Spirit. You've been sealed in the Spirit of God. Until the day of redemption. Until He catches you to meet, meet Him in the air. Or until you breathe your last and you just meet Him that way. Amen. Amen. Four thirty-one, And he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And there we were astonished at his teaching for his word, for his word possessed authority. This is the same authority that we have has been given to us. As we give ourselves over to the Holy Ghost, we're going to start walking in authority. And in the synagogue, there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Ah! <laughs> what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Shut up, or be silent, and come out of him. Yeah. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst. He came out of, of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out, and reports about him went out into every place in the surrounding Hallelujah. Yeah. Listen, we have authority. Yeah. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. On the day of Pentecost, they were all in one accord in one place. Jesus told them to tarry here and wait in Jerusalem. Tarry here and wait. And after that, the Holy Ghost 
is going to come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in all Judea, throughout the ends of the earth. I know I didn't hear everything. The witness is supposed to be miracles. The witness is supposed to be casting out devils. That is the authority that you have. You see, once you get your life right, once you get those things straight, now your life getting right is just simply a walking in obedience to Heavenly Father. And then you start meeting with God face to face. You start meeting with Him. You see, press it, keep pressing in until you, until you see it face to face. Come on. And as you're pressing into the things of God and, and meeting with God on a, on a continual basis, and then what's going to happen is you're going to go out and you start walking in the miracles. Right. You start walking and yeah. doing what the Spirit of God has come upon yeah. you for. Yeah, yes. that's right. The Spirit of holiness. Yes. <laughs> that's what you've received. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of holiness. Yeah. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost is not going to operate in great power if we were still dabbling in other things. I know the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. I understand that. But you're not going to be walking like Jesus walked. He called us to do the same. He called us to do the same. John. And he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure all diseases. And he set them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. And he said to them, take nothing for your journey. I'm not going to get into all of that. But he gave them power. So when you were baptized in the Holy Ghost, he gave you power. You got to understand the power, firepower that you have as a child of God. You have great firepower. Step into it. Rise up in it. Walk in obedience with the Word of God, with Heavenly Father. Walk in this obedience <coughs> to His Word. The full counsels of the Word of God. Not a pick and choose. Yeah. No. Yeah. There's no picking and choosing of yes. the Word of God. Amen. It's the full Amen. counsel. Yes. 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 And then 10, Luke 10, 17. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I could kind of hear this, like, come on, listen, I saw, yeah, yeah. I saw basically the prince of devils. He, he felt like lightning yeah. from heaven. Uh -huh. We cast him down. Yeah. So don't get so puffed up about this. Right? right? Uh -huh. But he was still excited that they were excited, too. Yeah. That, they, that it was revealed to them this authority, this power, and this salvation. So he goes, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Amen. And nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Amen. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Then he began to say... In that same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you. Yeah, Matter of fact, yeah, if you dig into that, that means when he rejoiced, it was he twirled. Yeah. He was twirling. 
because he was so rejoicing. I mean, he was like, yeah! Woo! Woo! And he began to just talk to the Lord. Woo! Come on. He wasn't, oh. All religious. Oh, that made me a little dizzy. I'm the other way. In the same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the understanding and revealed them unto little children. Yes, Father, for such as your uh, such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Then turning to the disciples, He said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Thank God. Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. Father, my eyes are blessed yes. Yes. that I get to see yeah. His mighty power and His yes. glory and His presence. Yes. I mean, come on, last Sunday, the glory of God that just came in and, 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 and swept through this place, the, the weighty presence, there was a holiness with this. Amen? And he shows up to draw you in. Why does he show up like that? Because he wants to draw you in closer. He said, yeah. come up by it. Yeah. These people began to cry and weep out. As Tamara says, I don't want to leave this place. I want to tell you, Tamara, you don't have to. I want to tell you all, you don't have to leave the place. Because the Bible says to keep your mind things which are in heaven. Where Christ is seen. Not on the things of this earth. That's how you stay in that place. That's how you dwell in that realm. And as you walk in that realm, demons have to bow. Demons have to bow their knees. Sin, sickness, and disease have to flee. Because of the authority, because of the Holy Ghost on me, the fire power that's on the inside of you, and you release it by faith. Yeah. You command those things to go. Amen. Yeah. Who glory be to God. <laughs> We've been given the power to trample upon scorpions and serpents. Hallelujah. Truly, truly, I say unto you, whoever believes in me will also do the works, John chapter 14, verse 12, will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. You see, as you've drawn closer to the Lord, and you ask, you're not going to be asking for just things to, to, to heap up for your own pleasures. God will want to just bless you because He loves you anyway. But you will start asking the things that, that He's going to set me for. You're going to ask for those things that you're going to say, Well, I want to know you. I want to walk in this. I want to walk in the mirror. I want to walk in the sun. Greater work should you do. Amen. And to deal with it, to start walking in that realm, is you got to deal with doubt. you got to get the doubt in. And this kind of doubt doesn't come up by my prayer and fasting. And this prayer of fasting is really you just setting aside time and saying, God, I'm going to commune with you. And because I want to look like you. I want to smell like you. I want to walk like you. I want to talk like you because you're my papa. Amen. And as you walk like papa, demons flee. 
And when you speak, you'll speak with the authority of heaven. And when you use the name of Jesus, demons will tremble. It's that simple. This is your authority. Walk in it. Walk in it. This is the relationship that's set before you. Pursue it. Are you seeing the correlation? You see what I'm, what I'm talking and saying? You've got to live this life of the Spirit in order to walk in this authority. And, this, and walking in the Spirit requires communion with Heavenly Father. Yeah. You can't think you're going to walk in the Spirit if you don't even commune with Father. Yeah. 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 It's that simple. Amen. You start manifesting the very life of Christ and you start showing forth the kingdom of heaven in the earth. The kingdom of God in the earth. Called to manifest his kingdom. We're ambassadors. What does an ambassador do? He represents his kingdom. He manifests his kingdom. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I don't care where you're at. Wherever you're at in the earth, it's His and you're His child. So you walk in your authority. You take the ground. You take ground. You manifest the life of God. You show it for Dwell with him. He dwells in you. He's in you and walks amongst you. So you are. It's time that you believe it and walk in it and trust him. If you know that you have not lived up to this, you have not walked this walk. You have not allowed the kingdom of God to be in you. You have not lined up in obedience. You walked in disobedience and you need to get rid of it. It's okay. I, he was merciful God. Then get up here right now and say, God, I do not want rebellion in my life whatsoever. You need to make this change.